Now, a six-year-old at Winchi has been denied access to education because she cannot walk. The assistant headmistress of the Winchi Methodist B Primary School uh, told Joe News she only admits active children. Joe Jokobina reports that the girl's rejection from school has left her family broken. Alberta is not a happy woman. All emotions she had bottled up for some time finally let loose. She is hurt. Her daughter was denied education because of her physical disability. Her six-year-old daughter's crime was that she cannot walk. Alberta brings out a school uniform she sold for the daughter and tells me her investment is now a waste. See? A husband says he could not also challenge school authorities because he thought they had a right to deny her daughter admission. The parents have since been trying to find solutions to make their daughter walk, including buying her crutches. My little Mabna will walk in her own time. She crawls to get to wherever she wants to go and never fails to smile. We followed up at the Methodist B Primary School in Wenchi to get a reaction from the school. The teachers confirmed they indeed denied the girl admission. The assistant headmistress also confirmed the child was not admitted because she could not walk. She gave many reasons why the child could not be admitted. But Mabna crawls to join other children and actively plays with them. She keeps a smile, caring less about the discrimination around her. The Wenchi Municipal Education Office says the attention has not been drawn to the situation. I'm currently at the Wenchi Municipal Education Office and the Ghana Education Service Mission Statement is here and it's very pronounced. I'd like to read it. The Wenchi Municipal Education Directorate assists to provide quality formal education and training to all children of school going age in a municipality to acquire skills, knowledge and attitudes that will prepare them for higher education and adult life to make them useful to themselves and society. So one wonders why little Mabina will be denied education on the grounds that she cannot walk. For now the girl is out of school but she's enthusiastic to join other children. Article 25 of Ghana's constitution grants children the right to education. Section 8 of the Children's Act also states that no child should be denied access to education. A right Mabna is seeking to enjoy.
Georgia Cobham, Joy News. We have to come to the Accra metropolitan area where the AMA last month announced plans to relocate traders at the Agbogloshi market to Ajin Kutuku in the Gang West municipality of the Greater Accra region. Matilda Pabunga visited the area, particularly the Kokumba Yam market, and reports no movement has so far taken place. The directive, according to authorities, is to help decongest the Yagbubulishi market area as a result of continuous traffic caused by trucks of loading goods to the market. With a new market constructed at Ajay in Kutuku by the government, the AMA promised to relocate them by 28th February. Speaking to leaders of the market on why the directive has not been obeyed, they say there have been no consultation with them regarding the modality of movement. Actually, when they started construction, they didn't consult us. We were only called sometime at the later part of last year. We were taking the, I can just say, at the very tip end of the year, 2013, that uh, the mayor himself led us to Ajikotuku, and then they showed us the market. But then it wasn't suitable. And they told us that we were to have well, some sort of uh, round table conference meetings, pull up meetings to find out whether we had uh, well, we accepted the place or not. But that never occurred to We never had any meeting with them again to discuss uh, our intentions, whether we, it was, uh, what we have seen was suitable to, for, uh, to us or not. He further stressed the new market sheds built for them will not favor their business. The nature of the constructions at Ajinkotuku, the structures that have been put up over there, are not suitable for what young trade. For instance, when you come to a market, you go inside, you say we need some sort of a rectangle shaped type of uh, uh, well, construction, which will be enclosed with the middle, the center part open, whereby our yams can be kept. But I think they put up buildings, actually like warehouses, and yams, we don't keep yams in wells, they all get rot rotten. So we plead out with them that they should take a second look at the structures that have been put up and try to put up structures that would be suitable for our yam trade. He added the leaders of the market had put measures in place to address the traffic situation around the market. Uh, well, we are forcing vehicles into areas that were earmarked as what car parks. And then because there is one market, and then there's another station here, we used to call it the Park. We've moved all the vehicles there. And we have asked that any vehicle that discharges its cargo must try to find a place somewhere else to park, but not park along the roadside to what, uh, uh, sort of uh, obstruct a uh, free flow of uh, what, vehicles along the major road. He, however, appealed to the authorities to engage the leaders of the market in their discussion to relocate them. Matilda Bamaga for Joy News, Accra. Students of the Gambaga Girls Senior High School in the East Mampurusi district of the northern region are appealing to government to improve water supply in the district and infrastructure in the school to save them from the hours spent traveling long distances in search of water. Difficulty in accessing clean, safe water and lack of classroom blocks is having a huge impact on academic performances in the school. Access to clean, safe water for students of Gambaga Senior High School in the East Mampurisi district of the northern region is affecting academic work. Students of the school on a daily basis spend productive academic time in search of water from nearby communities. This is because of the inadequate supply of water to residents of the area. Some students of the school tell Joy News they are often bitten by snakes and report to class very late. When it comes to water issue on campus, students have to sometimes tread for like five miles to some streams to fetch dirty water to come for their consumption, which is sometimes very dangerous, but we have no other option. But we have to compel to that because there is no water. Sometimes we have to go to a borehole, which is only one for the community and the school, and we have to go and struggle with the community ladies to fetch water, and it's not always easy. 
sometimes a student can take about five miles to look for water, which is very bad. We are here for, for studies, but the way we normally devote our time in searching for water is very bad. The difficulty in accessing clean, safe water is just part of the problems of the school. There are inadequate classroom blocks, dining hall and dormitories, compelling students to take their dinner and classes in makeshift system. In 2012, government attempted to remedy the infrastructure problems in the school and awarded contract for the construction of a dining hall complex and a dormitory through the GET Fund. The contractor abandoned work after some initial work over a year ago. Headmistress of the school, Amina Musa, said with the increase in the student population from 40 in 2007 to 656 at the moment, students and teachers are enduring hard times in teaching and learning. The school lacks so many things. We don't have dormitories, we don't have uh, infrastructure in general. It's a problem for the school. We just have a few classroom blocks. The problem of accommodation for them. Get Fund has given the school two uh, projects which are ongoing. We have the dormitory block and then the dining hall complex. With the dining hall complex in particular, for one year now, we haven't even seen the contractor on site. And so I think that it's important that we pay attention to uh, Gambaga Girls Senior High School. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin's report from the Northern Region. The National Petroleum Authority has reviewed upwards prices of petroleum products between 3 and 6 percent. Petrol has now gone up by 6.25 Ghana percent per litre and is now selling at 2 cities 50 pesos. Kerosene also sells now at 2 cities 60 pesos per litre. Diesel and marine gas oil have been affected by over 6% adjustments in price per litre. Premix fuel mainly used by fishermen went up by 3 cities 45 pesos and now sells at 1 cities 20 pesos per litre. Prices of LPG remained unchanged for the next quarter. Well, we, we stay with the uh, hikes in four prices, uh, unlike previous hikes where the price of crude, or, uh, crude on the international market was the benchmark for adjustment. The recent hikes have been blamed on the fallen city. Public relations officer of the NPA, Yaro Kasambata, told Joe News the authority was forced to pass on the cost to consumers due to the reduction in the value of the Ghana city. The Bank of Ghana has ejected workers and demolished its staff residential properties at cantonments here in Accra. The move was met with stiff opposition from some of its staff who claimed the act was a violation of their rights and a breach of the license agreement governing their stay in the bungalows. Security personnel allegedly from the Bank of Ghana brought down the property after ejecting workers numbering 12 of the central bank. Eleven workers of the bank moved to an alternative residence provided for them by the bank to pave way for some maintenance work. Benjamin Kwesidufo, who is the deputy manager for the other financial institutions' supervision department at the Bank of Ghana, however, insisted to stay on as to him. The move to eject staff from the residence was a breach of the license agreement governing their stay there. You said this is cracks. Now you have accepted there are no cracks. Now you are talking us, uh, to us that we should relocate. As at now, as I'm speaking today, there is no official reason that has been assigned to us why they wanted us to be out of this place. It, is only, it, it only came out when we went to court and I, I sought an interlocutory injunction to stop them from ejecting me here and also to stop them from instituting discipline measures which they had initiated while the matter was pending before the court. He added that although the bank plans to use the land for the construction of a hospital, the approach to their good intentions violates the human rights of the staff that lived there. And they seized our promotion, our bonus and everything. Now we knew the implications that 
if they go further, they can take even more serious decisions against us, whereas we have not done anything. Now, this place that we live in is governed by a license agreement, and the agreement states clearly the circumstances under which we can leave this place, the circumstances under which you can be asked to leave and all that. We asked them, what have we breached in the agreement that you, you want to uh, evoke? They couldn't bring anything from the agreement, but they said that they want to use their own power to decide that they want to get us out of this place. Benjamin Kosidufo, who hitherto lived in the apartment with his wife and five kids, including a year old baby, could not hide their frustrations as the armed security men continued to pack off their belongings without their consent. <laughs> His wife, Cynthia Ima Dufour, maintained that she has had to endure all sorts of harassment since 5 a.m. when the team arrived at their residence. There's an existing agreement which does not even allow them to interfere or do anything. I can stay here until retirement. If you want to use this for another purpose, I don't want to stand in your way and say that I will be highly unreasonable and that kind of thing. I'm prepared to co cooperate. But then do the right things. Let me see that you have adequately done what will take that financial burden and pressure off me and then I'm assured. Now they wrote to me just about two weeks ago telling me now, now they have fixed the place for me. Meanwhile, as far back as 2012, they are written warning letters and everything that why didn't I move? And I realized that the policemen that came here do not have any force of law, they do not have any authorization, and therefore they are not even supposed to be here. These escort vehicles that you see here are not for this particular assignment. It's for movement of money and not uh, ejecting of people. So all these things are pointed to the fact that there is nothing that they have against me, but they have decided to use the arm of force against me. The acting head of security at the Bank of Ghana, whose name was giving us a FIFA, however, declined to react to the sentiments of Benjamin Kosidufo, telling Joy News off camera that he was only following instructions. Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News. Well, President John Mahama has responded to accessions by opposition New Patriotic Party that he stole the idea after uh, the, the idea of a free senior high school education in Ghana by 2016. The free senior high school mantra was the main theme of the NPP's manifesto in the 2012 election campaign. The president says the idea of a free senior high school is not registered in anyone's name, but rather a constitutional requirement when he addressed students at the University of Education, Winneba. I'm told I was accused of having stolen somebody's idea. The last time I checked with the Registrar General's department, nobody had a copyright to free SHS. Somebody said if he became president, he would implement free secondary education immediately. And what was our position? We said that free SHS was not his idea and that it was in the 1992 constitution and that presidents and governments were enjoined to make secondary education progressively free. As president of the Republic of Ghana, I am just abiding by the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. The Minister of Education and her team have presented a roadmap to me and we're going to finalize the roadmap and publish it so that Ghanaians would see exactly what the roadmap toward free secondary education is. But like I said, we can anticipate that in the 2015-2016 academic year, fees for day students will be abolished. And so if you're a day student, you won't be required to pay any fees. Also, the component of fees that boarding students pay that are the same as day students pay would also be abolished. What we expect is that boarding students in the 2015-2016 academic year will only be paying the boarding and feeding grant component of their fees. And that we expect in subsequent academic years to progressively reduce the burden on parents. In other news, and uh, that's also the last one before we go, the chairman of the Lands and Forestry Select Committee of Parliament has urged government to, to invest more money into the development of the Shai Hill Resource Reserve. The development project of the reserve requires about $10 million to complete, according to the executive director of the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission. This was revealed at a familiarization tour of the Select Committee to the Shire Hills Reserve to ascertain its economical viability. 
The Shy Hills Resource Reserve receives about 15,000 uh, visitors each year, and it is the third in terms of revenue generation in the protected wildlife areas. The primary challenge facing the reserve is the security of the wildlife. Some of the animals that stray into town are either knocked down by vehicles or killed by poachers. Fencing, the entire 33 kilometer, we're estimating about 4.7 million US dollars. It is our hope that every year we'll put it in our budget and perhaps this is where we need your support that you also help us by approving for us so that within the next five years if we can secure the fencing. Also, the need to restock and construct access roads to the reserve are being considered. Restocking, we, the water balls, hatterbees, dikers, and exotics like zebras and giraffe, we are estimating about 70,000 US dollars. Then we need access roads also for the game viewing. We have estimated about 20 kilometer roads inside which will cost us about 150,000 if we want to make it all weather. Because as soon as it rains, you cannot move, especially these, all these buses, if there's to be any rain, there's no way you can move in the reserve. The most prominent animals in the reserve are the baboons, which become the main attraction to the reserve. There is also the ostrich, western cob, bisbark, pythons, the rich bed life which has over 160 species, and many more. Current managers of the reserve hope to partner government or the private sector to develop more of these eco accommodation tents to rake in more revenue. The chairman of the committee could not agree more. Three of these eco lodges here, yeah, um, this demonstrates the potential that uh, is available in this uh, reserve. Uh, I will use this opportunity to encourage investors to, to come in to have a first and look at the environment and then uh, to see how they can invest in it. There's a huge potential. If you look at the landscape behind, left and right, all around, uh, this will be a very nice area to come and relax. And so I will entreat all business-minded uh, people uh, to come around, have a look at the area. And for us, let's see how we can partner with them to develop this. With this strategic location, it has the capacity to increase visitation by 100% or even more if innovative ecotourism infrastructure is put in place to develop the area. Emmanuel Lante, reporting for Joy News. You know, like the safaris that um, you get to experience in Kenya, etc. You know, you see the lions and you're in the cage or watching. This one, don't be afraid. You can go and stay in the tent there. No monkey will come and attack you, anything. Yeah, yeah everything. but it's a beautiful place. Yes. I mean, you can visit over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, and nice then, place to go with a family. And those are the things that Ghanaians, we don't do often. But the point is, if you just want to sightsee and get to have a very relaxed weekend after going through all those tours and coming to relax uh, with your family, mm -hmm. with your spouse, with your, your, your partner, I think it's the, it's the best uh, visit you can always have as an attraction for the weekend. All right, so that's it for the AM News. Uh -huh. We'll give you a quick recap of the headlines. A six-year-old at Winchi has been denied access to education because she cannot walk. Now, the assistant headmistress of that particular school, which is Winchi Methodist B Primary School, says she only admits active children. Mm. Well, there's been increments in petroleum prices, and the National Petroleum Authority um, has attributed the current upward adjustment in prices to the depreciation of Ghana's currency in the city. And President John Mahama says the idea of a free senior high school is not registered in anyone's name, rather a constitutional requirement. So those are the headlines we have for you. Next, we bring to you the top sports headlines we have in the studio. Stay with us. We'll be right back.